the Bunny Man. And I'm Crazy Susie. And we are in the Eyes of Terror. And right next to us is a, is a Luna that is very wanting her treat, very much wanting her treats right now. Yes, she is the treat monster. Yeah. So I believe this is probably the last of the zombies versus bunnies series. Mm-hmm. It is mutant. Nineteen eighty-four. And we have this film on DVD, but you can also view it on Amazon Prime. Do we have it on DVD? Yes, we do. We're crazy like that. I didn't realize we had it on DVD. The original title for this film is Night Shadows. It is rated R. It is an hour and 39 minutes long. It is a horror sci-fi thriller. And IMDb scores it a 4.8 out of 10. The director is John Bud Cardos and also Mark Rosemar. The writers are Mark, Mark blah blah blah. The writers are Michael Jones and John C. Cruz. John Cena. Do, 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 do. No. Do, do. Oh, no. The screenplay was written by Peter Z. Horton. And the cast is not a full list, obviously, because, you know, nobody has time for that. Wings, Causer. Hauser. Hauser. It's uh, Josh Cameron. Bo Hopkins is Sheriff Will Stewart. Jody Medford is Holly Pierce. Lee Montgomery is Mike Cameron. Mark Clement is Albert Hogue. Carrie Gufrey is Billy. Jeffrey Warren is, I'm sorry, Jennifer Warren is Dr. Myra Tate. Danny Nelson is Jack. Mary Neal Centicree is Miss Mapes. Stuart Culpepper is Mel. Johnny... Popwell is Captain Tom Dawson. And like I said, the rest you can find on IMDb. The estimated budget for the film is at two million five hundred. Yeah. Two million and five hundred dollars. And the storyline is two brothers discover that the residents of a small southern town are being infected by a form of toxic waste turning them into blood ravenous zombies. Well, that's the end of this review. Do <laughs> Way to ruin it in the intro. All right. So, that's I That's what it said. I know, I know. I'm sorry. No, no, I know. So, I actually came up with a little quip it because I really like the names for this one. So, I got Come on down and get your wings, Hauser, at Bo Hopkins Restaurant off Judy Medford Way. Come on down today. Off uh, visit us at Laurelwood Okay. Yeah. Whatever works for you. Well, so I, I just thought that that would be funny. Because Wings Hauser sounds like a dish at a restaurant. And so does Bo. And Bo Hopkins sounds like a restaurant. <laughs> okay, so the movie begins on a very foggy night. And there's this older gentleman walking around outside in front of a house. And there's a couple of kids, and they're around a campfire, and... <laughs> Are you afraid of the dog? <laughs> dog? <laughs> Goofy. <laughs> you just can't help yourself. You gotta drag that into everything, don't you? It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. We're not in the 80s now. We're not in the 90s. Just bring it on back. <laughs> I'm bringing it back. No, just bring it back to the present. <laughs> I'm bringing it back. No, no, no. No, no. I'm so going to bring it back. No. I'll let you do that one special. You know, we, we talked about the mask. I gave you that. So that means we could binge watch uh, Are no. You Afraid of the Dark? No. It's dark and very foggy. He's using a flashlight so he can see. 
It is usually what flashlights a are for. Muddy looking puddle. That's what it looks like to me anyway. It looks like mud. So he bends down and he gets a sample of this muddy type substance and he goes into the house. He goes in to the house and finds someone who appears to be dead, but has a cut in the palm of their hand. Someone else finds him and goes and it goes to the next scene. Two friends are on a road trip, Josh and Mike. Actually, you find out they're brothers. I just, I guess I assume that they were friends, but they're brothers. They're going to the country so they can relax. They're driving a convertible. Ooh. And it looks like it's a Mustang convertible and on top of it, white. It's a white. With a, with a leather interior and hubcaps. <laughs> Slice of whale eyes. Some country bumpkins hit their car with the beat up old truck and run them off the road. Their new not so friendly neighbors drive away and leave them with no way to get around. The ultimate tire life thing. So they try to hitch a ride. Josh almost gets hit. A guy stops to give them a ride. His name is Mel. Mel says he hunts anything that runs away. He's a sweet guy, that Mel. Nothing wrong there with that Mel. Mel lets them off at the fork in the road and tells them to shake a leg. It's not good to be out on these roads at night. They walk on into town and get there at dark. Well, they weren't on the road at dark, so that's a good thing. They see the town drunk stumble out of the bar as they get to the ins. Oh. They see the town drunk stumble out of the bar. As they go to go inside, Mike thinks he hears something. So he goes out back to see what it was. He finds a dead man. Out by the train, train tracks. They're both freaked out by this, so they go inside so they can notify the police. Well, inside they find those good old country boys who ran them off the road. And they must have got into some Confederate flag depot because there are flags everywhere in this place. Yeah, you know, some people just know where to get things. They, they're in the know. So, you know... Their friendly neighborhood country boys are inside playing a game of pool. The owner tells them to back off. The country boys fight with them, and the sheriff breaks it up. They tell the sheriff about the dead man out back. They go out back with him, and he is not there. Instead... There's a drunk man. The sheriff tells the drunk man to go on home. The drunk man says, I thought this was my home. <laughs> I'm not home? Oh my gosh, I thought I was home. You know, because this turf of grass is so nice next to the railroad tracks. <laughs> <laughs> it's so soft. Just like, a, just like the new mattress I just bought. Mm. Uh, no wonder it was breezy. <laughs> I thought my air conditioning was working. I thought it left the window open <laughs> or the side of the house. <laughs> <laughs> so the sheriff takes them on over to Mrs. Mapes. Nope, nope, got ahead of myself. So, hold on, I lost my spot. The old drunk man, the sheriff takes them to get Mike patched up and tells them to, to leave in the morning. But he finds suspicious goo and takes a sample. The doctor patches him up and tells him to not travel, to stay in town a day or two. The sheriff gives the doctor the sample of the goo. He collected it in a metal container and it has burned 
through. Sheriff took them to Mrs. Mapes, and she is quite accommodating and loves company. She shows them to their rooms, and they get settled in. Josh sees some creepy figures outside and bursts into Mike's room. Mike is still talking about the dead man, and Josh, Josh says he does not care. They just need to get the car fixed and get out of town. Then they will call the county cops. Josh tells Mike, don't leave the room. I love you. Don't leave the room. The doctor sees her last patient and her and her assistant close up. Mike is woken by a scratching sound. He looks under the bed and something grabs him and drags him under the bed. Josh gets up and goes to Mike's room. Miss Mapes is making his bed and he isn't there. She says he isn't there. Josh says if she can tell Mike, he will be back. He's going to town. Miss Mapes had said it was like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. She thought that Josh was going to sleep the entire day away. So Josh decides he's going to go to town and look for Mike and get information on how he can get the car fixed so they can get out of there. Well, Josh goes to the local eatery and he meets Holly. And she offers to drive him to the gas station on the other side of town. The sheriff goes to see the doc about the sample. She says it was blood, human blood with some sort of strange substance in it. They hear a noise in the back room and they go to check it out and notice the fridge was broken into and blood is missing. Holly and Josh stop by the school and one of her students is there. His name is Billy. <laughs> He's very upset. He says he can't go home because no one is there. Billy <laughs> Billy leaves because Holly tells him they probably went to the store and will be home soon. Yeah, he's going on about how they abandoned him. That's, you know, and she's like, they just went to the store, crazy kid. Why would they abandon you? Mm -hmm. They probably went to the store and they will be home soon. They hear a mysterious noise. Holly says the only other person who might be here is the janitor. Well, he is the country boy from the bar. He is in the basement with a dead little girl. And Albert tells him, Who do you think they will believe when the sheriff comes? Josh runs off. The sheriff has a drinking problem and they are short-handed. They find the same substance the doctor analyzed on the girl. The doctor asks to be able to have one night to investigate the body. The sheriff agrees and goes to notify the girl's parents. Holly is driving down the road and Josh pops up from the back seat. He says... They can talk when they get to her house. The sheriff goes to the Mitchell's house to tell them about the girl. No one seems to be home. The door handle to the pantry is hot and Mr. Mitchell is inside with lesions all over, all over him. He tells the sheriff they have something on their hands Dun, dun, dun. And he quits breathing. The sheriff goes to his car, takes a swig of the liquor, and pours the rest out onto the ground. You know, for his homies. Yep. Holly tends to her Uncle Jack. Josh says he is going to borrow her car and go look for his brother. Holly and Josh both admit they are scared. Josh feels like his brother is mixed up in all of this 
and it's his fault. Josh tells her she is pretty and starts kissing her and starts having stomach pains. Because we all know when you make out, it causes stomach pains. And the best time to do that is when the person closest to you is missing. When you're trying to get all sexy sexy and you're just like, mmm, baby, I just ate Taco Bell. <laughs> you know what that means. Stomach pain. Stomach pain. Diarrhea. 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 <laughs> the only thing worse than that is making out after you had crystals. Oh. And if you don't know what a crystals is, crystals is basically the southern version of White Castle. Gut bombers. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not sexy time. <laughs> <laughs> so Holly takes him to the dock. Doc asks if she has seen Mike. Doc says he will not be able to go looking for anyone tonight. She gave him a shot. Holly says she will take him back to her place. The sheriff... The sheriff's boss comes over to the Mitchells. The body is missing, and he is not happy. He finds the empty bottle in the yard and assumes he drank it all. He tells him the girl's body is at the docks, not at the corners. The, doc the doctor's assistant is having flu symptoms. She is explaining the symptoms as he is going through them. Once he fully transforms, he comes after her and tries to attack her. Holly and Josh go back to the car, cra car crash, and Mike is not there either. Josh asks her if there is a chemical plant here. He climbs the fence and she gives him 15 minutes. The place has so many metal barrels. It looks like a metal barrel warehouse. Yeah. So he climbs into the loft of a building, but unfortunately, the ladder he chose to hang on is not very sturdy, so he falls. And that's what grabs everybody's attention. Not that he was on this this ladder for like it was seemed like an eternity. Yeah. So, the ladder is not very stable. Mel melts him. With a gun to the face. What? Mel meets him with a gun to the face? Meets him, yeah, not melts. Meets. Yeah, there you go. Mel meets him with a gun to the face. Holly. Well, he was making patty melts. He was like, <laughs> you guys do that? I'm going to make some patty melt. Hey, who's that over there? I'm going to melt you to the face. Yep. Yep. My patty melt. Holly comes rushing in like Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. It turns into the Dukes of Hazard movie at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's how the Duke boys came in. <laughs> And they get away. He like across through the window and everything. I mean, <laughs> it was just. Josh goes to the sheriff station, and tells the sheriff, who does not care. The only proof he cares about is that of the one liquor he is drinking. Holly goes home to check on her uncle. He has been infected. Josh and the sheriff. Pull up as Holly is screaming. Josh, Josh shoots at Jack and he jumps out of a second story window and runs away. They go to the sheriff's office, get the guns and ammo, and they go to the docks and the sheriff, the sheriff and Holly do. Sheriff finds the docks recording of her findings and the attack. It was all recorded. The sheriff has to shoot the doc's assistant and some patients who have turned. They lock themselves in the back room and they find the doc dead. 
Josh goes back to Mrs. Mapes and searches for Mike. He finds him in it in the basement on an old dusty mattress. Miss Mapes daughter was who took Mike and she was in the basement. Josh got out and ran. Holly went back to the school and found Billy. Billy. She tells him he doesn't have to worry anymore. Josh is coming to get them. And just as they are about to leave the bathroom, all of the infected kids come and try to get them. It always has to be kids. Kids are creep the creepiest things mm -hmm. in horror movies. Ever. Yes, they are. Children of the Corn creeps me the crap out. I, can't I think that's the only movie that you really just are like, I cannot watch this movie. Yeah, that is my kryptonite. Nope, can't do it. Nope. You know, it's, it's like when you hear kids singing in the background of a movie. You're like, I'm done. I am. I am done. Can't do it. Kids come and try to get them. Josh comes and pulls them out of the stall. And they barricade the bathroom door shut. And they drive off. Unfortunately, they couldn't save Billy. Billy. Josh asked where Will, where Will was. Well, she sort of, when she was trying to save Billy, she really looked like she really wasn't trying. She was sort of like, here, just take him and pushing him down. <laughs> so, they go to the doctor's office. Holly waits in the car. The fog comes rolling in. Josh finds a flashlight. The sheriff's hat. His gun. It's all on the floor. Beside the doctor's body. The car gets surrounded by zombies. Holly lays on the horn. Yeah, Josh beats them off. With the bench. <laughs> that is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. He comes out of the doctor's office and there's that bench there. He picks up the bench and he starts beating them off. It falls apart. So he's like, okay, mm -hmm. here's a two by four. I'm gonna beat you off with that. <laughs> oh, that one broke. Next two by four. Beat you off with that. He just picked up a bench and. Well, uh, hey, and resourceful. I also think that part of the funding for this movie came from drama, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, because there are two consecutive. Uh, <clears throat> um, you think in the original it paused for Dramamine commercials? Yeah, yeah. No, no, because no, it had it had two posters for Dramamine. It was like if you ever you know don't get car sick or whatever Dramamine, and then outside the door it had the exact same poster. So yeah, makes sense. Dramamine. So they drive away, but. One of those freaking zombies is still on the top of the car, and the car ends up flipping. Dun, dun, dun. Like we said, it turns Dang into... Zombies. It turns into a Duke of the Hazard show. <laughs> they get out and they run. They go to the garage. Josh finds some old rags, bottles, gas, and he makes Molotov cocktails... She asked what happened to Will. He says, I don't know. I like to call them Mazeltov cocktails. I think he made it. But don't think about it. Well, she starts breaking down, too, at this point. He, they're, like, feeling she's starting crying and crap, and he's like, knock it off. We got stuff to do. He's like, we have each other. Go back in the garage and get some more bottles, you know. Focus on what we need to do now, basically. So she goes, gets up to do what he asked, and she sees Albert. Albert says he plans on using her as bait on a hook so he could get out of there. Josh got the gun away from Albert. He told Holly, I'm sorry, he told Holly to tie Albert up. Well... Albert took the rope from her. The zombies pulled him through the window. They you, they ended up having to use the daggum Molotov cocktails to try to fend the zombies off 
Janky Albert. They retreat inside, but more of the zombies keep coming. And right at the nick of time, before you think they're going to get eight, here comes the sheriff. Gun, gun a blazing. Will to the rescue. He shows up just in the nick of time with help with him. And they gun down the zombies to save the day. And then, he th and then at the end, he meets them. The head cop guy was like, something, something, something. And he was like, he can shove this badge up your butt, basically. And that was the end of that. So, anything you want to say about Mutant? I didn't look up the uh, trivia. They supposedly made a new one. Hmm. All right. Apparently, because of poor box office results, the film was at least uh, was the last to be released by Film Ventures International (FVI). Edward L. Montoro, president of FVI, disappeared shortly afterward, taking a lot of money from the company coffers with him. Nothing has been heard from him since. A million dollars. Yep. Writer John C. Cruz stated in an interview that the monster were never intended to be pasty-faced shambling zombies. Who wants there to be pasty-faced zombies? A sequel was written in the early 2000s but was never filmed. Bo Hopkins was attached to the project and was set to reprise his role as Sheriff Will Stewart. A part was also specially written for Ken Forey. Director Bud Cardos, John Bud Cardos, replaced original director Mark Roseman in early in production. According to writer John C. Cruz, the original story, while under the title The Pestilence, Concerning secretive and illegal germ warfare research being conducted by the U.S. military in a remote area of, Rocky, of the Rocky Mountains. A lab worker is infected by some part of the mutant flu virus and carries the contagion to an isolated town. He admits Stephen King novel The Stand was an influence. Hmm. President of Film Ventures International, Edward L. Montero, was responsible for most of the changes in the script after the rewrite process. Writer John C. Cruz admits some of the changes were good or acceptable. Changing the germ war warfare premises uh, to toxic waste poisoning, but most weren't. During this process, the title was changed to Night Shadows, which the writers thought was weak. According to writer John C. Cruz, the title was changed to Mutant prior to release in an attempt to mimic the success of Aliens. The original Vester VHS release had feigned monster painted over the original poster. Some DVD companies mistaken and confusingly used the poster artwork of Forbidden World 1982 as the cover art for this film, because both films were released under the title Mutant in various countries. The closed gas station bears a sign reading Cantor's Service Station, a reference to producer Ego Cantor. Writers John C. Cruz and Michael Jones decided to collaborate on writing a horror script in 1980 while working in the mailroom at MGM Pictures. They wrote the script for Night Shadows, which was titled The Pestilence at the time, while on their lunch breaks and after work. They finished the script in only a few months. Well, that explains a lot mm -hmm. of things. Writers John C. Cruz and Michael Jones originally intended the film to be scary and atmospheric, not violent. After the script was bought, the writers were 
contractually obligated to deliver a complete rewrite of the script within 30 days. They actually delivered it in two weeks by taking time off from work, working late, and working weekends. Cameo, executive Edward L. Montoro, appears as, an, uh, as on a wanted flyer Bo Hawkins' scribbled notes on during a scene late in the film. All right, well, that was taken from IMBD. <clears throat> so, what's your rating? Give it a 2.5. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'll give it a 3.5. Not 5. So, this does bring an interesting sort of different take on zombies. Yeah. So, then there... Okay. I give it that. So, there were certain things that sort of bothered me that they never explained in the film. There's a lot of things mm. that bother me that they never explained in... Hence, that's why I give it such a low rate. Well, then let's talk about them. One of the things that sort of bothered me was it was seemed like a really major part of it, but it was never, I guess, explained, was the ticking of the light bulbs. I understand that they were sensitive to light, but why actively take out light bulbs? And did they get ladders to take out the, the light bulbs up on the ceiling? I mean, I mean, they actively done this. The doctor says that there's no way a human being could survive or live with this substance in their veins. So, how could someone actually live long enough in order to infect other people? Well, yeah, and I mean, during like the transformation scenes, they're they're bubbling up. Like, why aren't they, I guess, oozing? Like... Because, like, during the transformation scene of the uh, assistant, like, his skin was bubbling. It was broiling up. And yeah. it was expanding. And skin usually it can expand for so long, but it can't do it dramatic, drastically without splitting. Well, that, that didn't even bother me. But the thing it is, me. Um, I mean, that just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If you're going to say that there's no theoretical way that a human body can contain such an acidic substance without a person and a person live yeah and then the whole splitting of like uh, you know there's the splitting of the hand the mm -hmm. the palm like what was that all about like uh, out of all one thing that is splitting is the palm of the hand mm -hmm. like that bothered me it was just... Well, she had said that it reminded her of, like, the leeches. So, that's how, I guess, supposedly, they were feeding off of people, maybe? See, everything has this possible premise, but nothing is really, like, defined. Yeah. And that's what really bothers Well, you me. know, it's like, I feel like they could have had, like, a mouth. Like on the, the palm, you know, like you said, with the leech concept, like a leech mouth or something. Just They didn't even have to do that. They could have just explained it. Well, like I said, that's what bothered me. It never there was no really rational explanation well, okay. of anything. Yeah, and <laughs> that's what bothered me about the, the, the whole light thing. They actively took out the lights, but they were nowhere to be found. You know, you would think that they would take out the light bulbs and throw them on the ground or something. But no. They're, like, disposed of them somewhere. You know, they're, they're somewhere. There's a room full of zombies chucking their light bulbs into that one room. And then, like, the one the, the dad character jumps out of the second story window and goes in full daylight and nothing happens. He just is screaming. The uncle. Yeah, the uncle. And yeah, and he took out the light bulb too. I mean, I don't think it's a horrible film. I've seen worse, but I do like the fact that it has a different spin on things. So, did did you like the zombies in this one? I don't think it makes a lot of sense for these zombies to be bloodthirsty because zombies. Well, the whole idea of zombies is they like brains. That's well, there's that, but it, it just. But they're not... For zombies to survive, they have to eat brains. That, that is 
That's the whole premise of zombies. Yes. At no point during this film do we really see them eat another creature being. They just infected them. Right. But they want blood. They don't want brains. Yeah, and the only time that really even comes up is when one of them, some of them break into the clinic and goes through the blood bank. Yeah. But you know, you don't actively see them like leeching off of somebody freshly. Like, you could have done that with Billy or something. I mean, mm. like I said, so many things not really clarified. And then, you know, she, the uh, Mary, wasn't it? She was like touched, but she never be. And then what was it with the heat thing? I don't know. Like, did you notice that? It was like they were touch. The doorknob was hot. Mm-hmm. You know, everything they touched was supposed to be hot. He, one guy melted through the plastic glass of the car with his fingers. Yes, because the substance that was in their blood was very acidic. That's why the doctor said. A human shouldn't be able to survive with that substance in their blood. Hmm. Yeah, it melted through the metal container that the sheriff put it in. But it doesn't melt through a human flesh. I mean, it just... It's asinine. Yes. So... Now you understand yeah. why I gave it what I gave it. It just... So do you so do you think that the original like transference would probably would have been from like because I think they they were dumping it into he said something about a mine do you think that the mine went through the entire town or whatever which if you know a mine it does mm-hmm. but you could also it would also leach in into the groundwater water. groundwater yeah. and that can lead to the infection of it so that's one possible transference. And that's the only reason why I think, you know, that's the... But why would everyone but, like, three people not be infected? And what was up with, the, like, the door underneath the bed? Mm. Like, there was a that... I guess to feed the girl, I never thought about that till now. There was a, you know, a hidden door underneath the bed of the bed and breakfast that they were at. That the brother got dragged through. Mm-hmm. So, there was that. It's just, there's a lot of ifs, like, and you could tell it was rewritten and rewritten and rewritten mm-hmm. throughout the... Because some things are finely tuned, but then there's some finite details that are, like, really vague... I, but I really did like the second part of the movie where it turns into uh, a Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I wish that was. I, I really wish that we could see like a Dukes of Hazard versus zombies or something like that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like Boss Hog be, being a bit. You know, like the, I really don't see how they can even be referred to as zombies because theoretically, zombies <laughs> want brains. I know, I know, I know, and and it even says bloodthirsting. Creatures. We can let's call them creatures if that bothers you so much. But no, I, I get what you're saying. It's just, it's just, it was a different. It was definitely different, and no one ever talks about this film. So, the, what do you think of the cover art? I like the cover art. Yeah, it's pretty simplistic. I. It's very streamlined. Though. I like it. And I really do think it's. It's sort of nostalgic of the, like the nineteen eighties film, just over the top some parts and mm-hmm. so this film is thirty three years old. Yep. Sure is. It was born it it was released the day I was bo- the uh the year I was born. Alright. So I think that ends our Discussion of mutant, unless there's anything else you want to talk about. I believe that's all. All right. Remember, we do have a Redbubble account, so you can get some of our merch. We do have a uh, what's that thing? Everybody has one now. Patreon. A Patreon. <laughs> uh, if you want to support us, 
uh, you know, give a dollar or whatever, we would highly appreciate that. If you wanted to, we're not asking you to. Just out of the goodness of your heart. Um, and, you know, everything still stands. You know, if, if you want to donate 20, I will start doing the illustrations again, and you will be getting the illustrations per episode. It's just I haven't done them because of personal reasons. Like, things are just... I haven't been able to really get to them. But that would... You know, that could, that's going to change. I haven't been motivated to do them, I guess. That's the big thing. Um, because we've had a lot of personal stuff going on. And that's why we're also late on these. So, Patreon. If you want to do PayPal, we have PayPal. Uh, Redbubble for the merch. We'll be adding new stuff to the store. Anything else? I believe that's all. Follow us on Twitter if you want to. We're also on Instagram and WordPress. But yeah. you. <laughs> uh, any other stuff? So- I'm not very active, but we do have a Tumblr. I think that's it. I think that's it. So. We'll scare you later. Bye.